The Future History, by Robert A. Heinlein, describes a projected future of the human race from the middle of the 20th century through the early 23rd century. The term future history was coined by John W. Campbell, Jr. in the February 1941 issue of Astounding Science Fiction. Campbell published an early draft of Heinlein's chart of the series in the March 1941 issue. Heinlein wrote most of the future history stories early in his career, between 1939 and 1941 and between 1945 and 1950. Most of the future history stories written prior to 1967 are collected in the past through tomorrow, which also contains the final version of the chart. That collection does not include universe and common sense, they were published separately as Orphans of the Sky. Groff Conklin called future history, the greatest of all histories of tomorrow. It was nominated for the Hugo Award for Best All-Time Series in 1966, along with the Barsoom series by Edgar Rice Burroughs, the Lensman series by E. E. Smith, the Foundation series by Isaac Asimov, and the Lord of the Rings series by J. R. R. Tolkien, but lost to Asimov's Foundation series. Topic. Definition. For the most part, the past through tomorrow defines a core group of stories that are clearly within the future history series. However, Heinlein scholars generally agree that some stories not included in the anthology belong to the future history series, and that some that are included are only weakly linked to it. James Gifford adds Time Enough for Love, which was published after The Past Through Tomorrow, and also Let There Be Light which was not included in the past through tomorrow, possibly because the collection editor disliked it or because Heinlein himself considered it to be inferior. However, he considers time enough for love to be a borderline case. He considers the number of the beast, the cat who walks through walls, and to sail beyond the sunset to be too weakly linked to the future history to be included. Bill Patterson includes To Sail Beyond the Sunset, on the theory that the discrepancies between it and the rest of the future history are explained by assigning it to the same bundle of related timelines in the world as myth multiverse. However, he lists a number of stories that he believes were never really intended to be part of future history, even though they were included in the past through tomorrow. Lifeline which was written before Heinlein published the Future History Chart. However, Lazarus Long does reference the protagonist of Lifeline and his device in Time Enough for Love, The Menace from Earth, We Also Walk Dogs, and the stories originally published in the Saturday Evening Post, Space Jockey, It's Great to Be Back, The Green Hills of Earth, and the Black Pits of Luna. He agrees with Gifford that, Let There Be Light, should be included. The story, And He Built a Crooked House, was included only in the pre war chart and never since. The Heinlein juveniles do not hew closely to the future history outline. Gifford states that, Although the twelve juvenile novels are not completely inconsistent with the future history, neither do they form a thorough match with that series for adult readers. It is not often recognized that they are a reasonably consistent future history of their own. At least one major story specified in the future history chart, The Revolution on Venus, ended up being told in the framework of the juveniles as between planets. The novel Variable Star, written by Spider Robinson from Heinlein's detailed outline, incorporates some elements of both the future history, such as references to Nehemiah Scudder, and the universe of the Heinlein juveniles, for example, torch ships and faster than light telepathic communication between twins. The adult short story, The Long Watch, Included in future history story collections, connects to Space Cadet through the character of John Ezra Dahlquist, the central character of the first, memorialized in the second. <laughs> 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 
Topic: Chronology. The following is a chronology of the future history. Years are included where known to indicate when each story takes place within the narrative timeline. Stories that were planned but never written are noted. See explanatory comments below. Lifeline 1939 in the original published version, 1951 in book collections. Let There Be Light Soon after Lifeline Word Edgewise never written. The roads must roll. Blow ups happen. The man who sold the moon. 1978. Delilah and the Space Rigger. Space Jockey. Requiem. The Long Watch. 1999. Gentlemen, be seated. The Black Pits of Luna. It's great to be back. We also walk dogs. Searchlight. Ordeal in space. The green hills of Earth. Fire down below, never written. Logic of Empire. The menace from Earth. The sound of his wings, never written. Eclipse, never written. The Stone Pillow never written. If this goes on. Coventry. Misfit. Universe. Prologue only 2119. Methuselah's Children 2136-2210. Universe. And its sequel. Common Sense. Approximately 3,500 rewritten into Orphans of the Sky. Time Enough for Love, 4,272 and earlier time periods. To Sail Beyond the Sunset. Topic: <laughs> Stories Never Written. The chart published in the collection Revolt in 2100 includes several unwritten stories, which Heinlein describes in a postscript. Fire down below, about a revolution in Antarctica, would have been set in the early 21st century. Three more unwritten stories fill in the history from just before. Logic of Empire, in the early 21st century through the beginning of If This Goes On. The Sound of His Wings covers Nehemiah Scudder's early life as a television evangelist through his rise to power as the first prophet. Eclipse describes independence movements on Mars and Venus. The Stone Pillow details the rise of the resistance movement from the early days of the theocracy through the beginning of If This Goes On. These stories were key points in the future history, so Heinlein gave a rough description of Nehemiah Scudder which made his reign easy to visualize. A combination of John Calvin, Girolamo Savonarola, Joseph Franklin Rutherford, and Huey Long. His rise to power began when one of his flock, the widow of a wealthy man who would have disapproved of Scudder, died and left him enough money to establish a television station. He then teamed up with an ex-senator and hired a major advertising agency. He was soon famous even off-world. Many bonded laborers on Venus saw him as a messianic figure. He had muscle as well. A recreation of the Ku Klux Klan in everything but name. Blood at the polls and blood in the streets, but Scudder won the election. The next election was never held. Though this period was integral to the human diaspora that would follow several hundred years later, Heinlein stated that he was never able to write them because they featured Scudder prominently. He disliked D him too much. Nehemiah Scudder already appears in Heinlein's earliest novel for us, The Living, a Comedy of Customs, written 1938-1939, though first published in 2003. Scudder's early career as depicted in that book is virtually identical with the above. 
but with the crucial difference that in the earlier version Scudder is stopped at the last moment by the counter-mobilization of libertarians, and despite mass voter intimidation carries only Tennessee and Alabama. In fact, the libertarian regime seen in full bloom in that book's 2086 came into being in direct reaction to Scudder's attempt to impose puritanical mores on the entire American society.